Hi everyone, welcome to this episode of the Comedy Defect Podcast, recording from the Comedy Container, which is located somewhere in Hertfordshire. Those of you who've been to the Comedy Container, it's only two of you so far, uh, will know where it is. It started, I'm here, I am moved in, it's ready to go, it's great, I'm loving it. The sound here is wonderful, it's nice and quiet, there's no noise, there's no traffic, nothing to distract us. There is only one way in and one way out, and that is after you've done an hour and a bit podcast, maybe more with some people. My name is Winter Fonander. I am the host of the show. I'm a comedian. This is a podcast. Yes, this is the Comedy Defect podcast, one that you can find on Patreon if you want to donate as much or as little as you want. But if you don't, kick something back to us, go to iTunes or Podbean or wherever you get your podcasts and leave us a nice, honest review. But as I say, we're here in the comedy container. Yes, settled in, ready to go. This is happening. I have been out today, so I'm recording this about four in the morning. So that is why this might be a little bit staccato as I'm talking right now. Uh, in this sort of one, <laughs> feels like a monosyllabic affair. But hey, but it's not monosyllabic, but look, I'm having problems with words right now. But that is okay. Uh, this is episode 30, guys, with It's Johnny Murph. It's Johnny Murph. He's always been such a lovely fella to me. I've always had a lot of time for Johnny. And as I say, I only have people on here that I like and I want to spend time talking to. And me and Johnny, we, we spent about three hours talking to each other. We talked for an hour and 40 minutes on this podcast. And we talked for another hour and about half when we were off the podcast. It was great. But Johnny's such a lovely guy. He's won the Audience Choice Award in Brighton Fringe for 2016. He is going back to reclaim his title for 2017 as well. I hope he gets it and hope he gets it done. Really lovely fella. Really funny guy. Go see him. Go find him online. And it's, his Twitter handle is It's Johnny Murph. Now... This episode, I had a lot of fun talking to him. We just talked a lot about comedy, just catching up, really, because I hadn't spoken to him for a while. And we used to do the sellout same gigs together. And, you know, as I say, it's just nice to catch up with my friends. But if you like this podcast, as I say, you want to donate to us, look, we're on Patreon. Go to Patreon. Type in The Comedy Defect Podcast. And don- donate, as I say, as much or as little as you want. If you don't want to, leave us a nice review. But if you don't want to do that, share your favourite episode. But if you don't want to do that, Join the group on Facebook. You can follow us on Twitter. We're there, at The Comedy Defect. You can follow me. It's at Winter Phone Under. Yeah, that's me. And if you want to come see my live stand-up gig dates, I've got a preview coming up. A few previews coming up for my Edinburgh Fringe show, which I'm writing now, which is called It's Not Just for Christmas. Come see that. It'd be a work in progress, but come see it. It should be fun. I've got some good stuff. I'm right. I'm really happy with it. So come see that. Come say hello. It'd be great to see you there. This is episode 30 with Johnny Murph. Find him on Twitter. Go find him on Facebook, as I say every time. Go find these guys on YouTube because they're lovely people and very funny people too. And this is episode 30 with It's Johnny Murph, the mild-mannered man of mirth. I hope you enjoy. Johnny Murph. Welcome to the Comedy Defect. Thank you very much. How are you doing? I am not. I'm full of mint pies. Oh, and okay. Chocolate. Oh, my God. It's past Christmas. Just Ooh. gone past Christmas and I'm returned. That's how I am. Yeah. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Let's put a date on this thing. But also, can I just say, I did not realise that you played that guitar break live. I know, I'm pretty good at that, That's yeah. amazing. Um, I, I, wish, I wish I did. No, that was, uh, that was a friend of mine who I used to work with. Bless him. He was a re- he's, he's been on this podcast as well. Dan Robottom. He was, he's a musician in Vespasian, just thought I'd tag him there. Yeah. He did the intro and outro music for yeah. me very kindly. Yeah. I mean, it's nice, though. It's a really, I think it's really it's nice. It's nice. Well, and Dan, I was trying to create the illusion of you just picking up your guitar and casually strumming. That's and it. Then... And then, at the end, <laughs> what, I don't know, something lives? <laughs> no, we'll just play with that. I don't know what would live. Nothing's left me yet. Yeah. I mean, well, I mean, I'm going to jinx my marriage now, aren't I? You no, know? no, don't. Yeah, my marriage lives. <laughs> Hurrah! <laughs> Joy lives. Yeah, Self-esteem. Yeah. <laughs> Confidence. Freedom. Of... Freedom. <laughs> Freedom, that's what you need. So tell me, what has been going on with your life? Well, uh, I'll do the happy stuff first. Um, <laughs> yeah. uh, now, effectively, I have been trying to write a lot more. One of the things I have done was uh, I've been oh, I gigged quite a lot this year. I had some absolutely lovely gigs, uh, which is which is which is great. I've had a bit of success in the Brighton Fringe, which was lovely, mm. and I. Also had a couple of, uh, I suppose, kind of, I would say, the, the famous progression gig. Oh, great. Um, I've had a couple of those, um, although it's not progressed much further than that. They were nice and, and also got a chance to work with 
real kind of professional Which comedians is. who are making a living from it and seeing how they operate in, in, mm. in real kind of terms. So that was nice. But I've been doing a, quite a bit of writing, actually, because I have been performing now. This will be year, come up for year five I have had a lot of material which I have used quite a lot, <laughs> which I know works, and um, I thought I'd try and spend more time writing. So that's pretty much what I've been doing from November last year, and I am not planning to do any kind of performing until March this year, mm. which seems a bit mad. Some people said, oh, mm. you've got to keep going, but I, I'm not stopping. I'm just, I'm just decided to kind of write yeah. and try and think of more things to do. Regroup. Regroup a bit, yeah. yeah. Brighton Fringe, did you do an hour? Um, I did a show with two other comedians, Colin, I'm going to forget who they are. <laughs> it's all about me, people. Uh, of course not, of course not, boys. Jeez, don't get upset. Steve Adams. And, team. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what does it say here? Steve Adams and Colin, <laughs> Colin Galatly. Uh, uh, and uh, our initials um, are Adams, Galatly and Murph, AGM. Right. And yeah. so we um, have a show called AGM. Right. And it's a compilation show. We, we went to... Admin was terrible for that show. Was... <laughs> yeah. yeah, the admin was great. Uh, we yeah. uh, went... We did it on 2015 the first time we went there and I'd never been to a fringe, liked the idea of a fringe, a bit scared about it, didn't have enough wherewithal or ability to write my own show at that time and I heard about going there to get spots at Edinburgh but mm. I didn't want to go to Edinburgh and just on a, on a whim, I just wanted to kind of go there with a show in my naiveness which still exists and I thought well it wouldn't, wouldn't it be good to get and do a little kind of three-hander with some people to split, split the costs. Mm. Um, Brighton didn't seem that far away. It seemed like a friendly um, fringe from what I heard. But also it's kind of a known fringe. So we thought, mm. let's do that. So 2015, we kind of, we got on really well. We all get on well. We're all of a certain age. And we ended up getting, um, there was an audience choice award. We had three mm. nights, we ran three nights there. We had an audience choice award. And at the end of the show, we used to say, please vote for us and such like. And we became runners up in 2015 to um, best show um, in the fringe audience choice. Great. We're not just comedy, it's just like we're showing the film. We thought, that's unreal, three old fat guys in a basement. Yeah. Um, that sounds amazing. So we thought, well, we'll go back the next year, which was mm. last year, 2016. And we thought we would do the same thing again, although we did have some new jokes. Yeah. So the first one was called AGM and Gags Matter. And the second one was AGM Back in Business, which mm. we did last year. And again, same thing. But this time we had lots more people turn up because the previous year... Yeah. This award thing, people um, saw it, was looking through all the lists of various gigs right. and, and saw, oh, these guys were running up, they must be good. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Away they turned up. Sure enough, um, we got people turned up. We had people turn up from last year. We had full houses, three nights. We were really shocked and amazed. Excellent. And we ended up winning the yes, the Brighton Audience Choice Award. Yeah. Um, at that time, I found out I was in the garden um, putting out food for the hedgehog that was down the yeah. bottom of the garden. It was some big award ceremony thing that was going on. We weren't there, of course, mm -hmm. uh, not because we were filming elsewhere, just because uh, I wasn't allowed to go. <laughs> and, uh, it was, and it was just amazing. We yeah. kind of thought, wow, that's, that's really cool. Mm -hmm. Because we seriously didn't know, well, we knew a few people in the audience, but... We had three nights of uh, 55 people in a room, yeah. and it was really cool. Excellent. We had so much fun doing it, and we're going back again this year, not expect to win, with loads of new stuff, but we just really like that fringe, yeah. and so we did that. We did Hastings as well last year, mm. which was really kind of interesting. Slightly different types of crowds there, um, more venues in pubs, mm. so there weren't specific rooms, so it was a little bit noisy, so you had to kind of shout a bit. Right. But again, a um, lot of energy and effort went into that. Yeah, correct. So it was really good. Just want to mention at Brighton, the people who um, organised the gigs we were at were a company called Lamb Comedy. Lulu and Amy run it, and they do an absolutely fantastic job. It was really quite amazing. We literally just turned up, and they had pre-arranged radio interviews for us, did all the flyers, did all the posters, wow. did all the pre-publicity, booked the venue, sold the tickets, all that kind of stuff. We literally just turned up, did one day of flyering. We were done. It was quite amazing. It was really, it was really good. So we really, that was that was probably the highlight, comedy highlight of last year. Mm. The other kind of thing that I enjoyed doing was did a, a, write, well, a writing course, a lady called Meryl O'Rourke, who is um, a kind of renowned comedian herself. She's absolutely amazing character. Really, really mind just firing all the time mm. and I did a, a tentative course of hers the amount of energy and ideas that woman produces in a six, six week course was kind of three hours on a Saturday was unreal one mm. my head used to hurt every time I come out of a class she, she was just full of ideas and I thought I am so nowhere near mm. a hundredth of what mm. the output that woman is doing I thought I've just got to start writing yeah. I've got to start writing and it was quite. A, it, that was that was the eye opener for me last. So I think it was going kind to of, last year was a bit of a discovery year. I found it quite amazed just being around uh, somebody who works professionally and she writes professionally for comedians and renowned comedians. It seems to be my word, renowned. I like that. 
uh, it must be the rotund renowned whatever uh, and it was it was really good and it was really interesting and the process of it the mechanics of it in the end as you know you can do all the mechanics in the world but it's when you stand up in front of people and say out loud that's when that's it yeah. so you have a radio show as well isn't that right I actually stood in for a chap called Anti During Battalion right um, <laughs> yeah. that's a long yes, name it's a long name yeah he's a surreal comedian you'd be surprised he's a, a surreal comedian he's a lovely lovely man and he has a regular show which he puts out on Wandsworth Radio and has done for many years and it's um, a sketch show with music and he has a blues guitarist in the corner mm. Mark the Hook Meller so Anthony Jury Battalion and Mark the Hook hello to you gentlemen <laughs> um, and, and it's really fun I, I met him a gig once and he said oh I, I run a radio show Johnny um you fancy coming along I said yeah that sounds great I've never done radio before mm. I thought yeah why not that sounds great and so I turned up at the studio in, in Battersea Wandsworth Radio I thought it was recording I went upstairs and he said oh do you know, the, do you know how to tune to Jim Chimney mm. and I said what the Mary Poppins song he said yeah and I said yeah I do it's great here's the words mm. and we're on in five four three Chim Chimney <laughs> Chim Chimney I went what the hell's going on yeah. it was um, f- uh, really was yeah. amazing it was really funny and flying about the seat your pants and you had s- weird sketches I didn't know what yeah. the hell I was reading out it was editing as I went yeah. uh, and it was really great fun and I really mm. enjoyed it and I got on well I, th- I think well it did get on well I went back as a guest a couple of other times and then when he had off to go off and do some business and he said would you stand in and so I had a bit of a run at the show Absolutely amazing. Really good fun. I really like radio. I'd love to do radio. I'd love to do more radio. Just try and get on it. That's the trick. Did you work in... Is it Rada as well? I, I didn't work in Rada, no. I, I, had, a, I had a chum who um, uh, who still is um, a, 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 a prominent person with the Rada framework. Royal and, Academy uh, of Royal, Dramatic Arts. Royal yes. Academy of Dramatic Arts. To, you know, don't Give you, it full name. Don't you know. <laughs> oh, darling, have you seen my Ophelia? Yeah. Um, here it is. I'm not a word. And uh, it's... Um, hence the skull you brought with uh, yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alas. I, I met him at a comedy course many moons ago. I wanted to learn to be a better public speaker. And I thought, because I used to work for a company where I had to get a stand up and Toast say... Masters. To, well, Toastmasters were going to join. It was, it was either Toastmasters or going for a professional kind of presentation course. Right. But the trouble is that were really expensive. Mm. I found this course as I was typing into Google. I'm not being paid for that, by the way, <laughs> but I'd like to be. Yeah. The comedy school oh, from, yeah. in Regent's Park, that popped up and it was a, a, a seven week course, had all the same elements as a public presentation speaking course. And I thought, yeah, that sounds that sounds fun. I've always liked comedy. I used to go to a lot of comedy when I was younger, and uh, really used to enjoy it. I used to go to jonglers. Who's your favourite? You saw you. Oh, like, oh that's, that's brilliant! I love that. Well, I tell you, it was Arthur Smith actually. Oh yeah, Arthur Smith, Ben Elton, uh, Dancing with the Dog, decades ago, literally, and before I think Ben Elton was just literally coming on television at the time. Arthur Smith did a joke which I'm not going to try and do. It was a joke where he he had three things which he he could do, and one of those things was tell a joke. The only thing is he only knew the joke in French. So somebody in the audience who could speak French, and because mm. it was in Battersea at the time, or that, he, he basically drew them out of the audience. And then he told this joke, which was the filthiest joke mm. in the world. And this poor lady, who was very prim and proper, said, I can't say that. I can't. And of course, the mm-hmm. humour came not from the joke, <laughs> yeah. from him interacting with this yeah. person. That was really amazing, impressive. I used to go to a lot of radio comedy at the time. The Wow Show, which was... Um, Steve Frost, um, the chaps who did Carlsberg, uh, not Carlsberg, yeah, Carlsberg Lager, I think, mm. I wrote my Black Label, I think it was. Oh, yeah. um, God, I've undone myself with my comedy knowledge there. They did this kind of radio sketch show, which I used to love watching. I used to go and see a lot of radio shows. They were free, that's another reason. I had to have a lot of money at the time, still haven't. And I used to go and see those. Spike Milligan uh, did radio shows at the time. All that kind of stuff. So I used to love going to see mm. live comedy, go to Jonglers a lot mm. um, in Camden and Battersea. Saw some uh, Harry Hill there. I saw him in, remorse, remorselessly heckled oh, right. um, from people in the audience who just didn't understand what he was about. The mm. Stalag Nights and Stalag Tights things. It didn't get him, but he was absolutely brilliant. And also, Hub Landlord was uh, was yeah. on there as well. And um, Paul Tonkinson, who was also on there. Too. Yeah. Uh, just seeing those of comedians, mm. loved loved them all. Mm. And uh, I thought that's a brilliant thing. Mm. I, you know, I never thought I could do that. And with the comedy score thing, I effectively just kind of like thought well this would be fun seems mm-hmm. like you do seven weeks you learn about the rudimentaries of comedy and at the seventh week you get pushed out in front of an audience to basically kind of do what you've written in the last mm-hmm. seven weeks and what you've created and at the end of it you decide whether or not it's one of the bucket list or whether you enjoyed it i stepped out to 150 people for my first gig it went really well it was quite amazing really mm-hmm. i felt absolutely pig sick beforehand mm-hmm. really enjoyed it thought yeah. i'm gonna do this again mm-hmm. this is so fantastic next gig was two people oh. who looked at me like i just 
defecated in their handbags mm. and I felt the lowest of the low mm. and on the way home because uh, I lived in Bedfordshire so I was from London so a long old travel back home mm. I thought what the hell did I just do that for what did yeah. I, am I deluding myself so I kind of thought well will I do it again and I thought yeah what the hell and then, sure enough, it's kind of now going to be this year, five years later, and still kind of trying to figure it out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> really. It's true. Like it's different, like sort of uh, breakthroughs that you have during like your evolution, if you like, of, yeah. of, of yourself. It's like, oh, what, what, what does it mean? What is it? This funny about me? What is? Who am I again? Oh, I'm this person. I'm older, but I'm also this has also changed me. I'm also different. Oh, this isn't actually who I really am. Oh, this is who I am actually underneath all that stuff yeah. that I pre-programmed or pre-learned. Breaking down those. Uh, those sort of habits, isn't it, really? Yeah, it's, it's, it's funny. I, I, there's always that kind of great debate about whether, oh, I don't need to go to, to, to school or class or listen to anybody, mm. blah, blah, because I just get up there and do it. It's like people who pick up guitars and say, yeah, man, I should learn how to play. Mm. Um, well, that's great, and, and, and bully, bully to you, mm. fine, clever people. But some people need a little bit of instruction uh, to kick off with, and like you say, you end up finding out who you are a bit. Uh, I, don't, I don't think any of these kind of classes or schools are bad things. I mm. think what they do is they give you maybe the tools that you didn't have to start doing that road, going down the road you just said, and mm. find out a little bit more about yourself if you want to be that kind of comedian. Mm. Because not everybody wants to get on stage and bear their soul mm. and all that kind of stuff. Mm. Well, one, one of the, the things out in Brighton last year when we finished, um, it was a bit like a wedding reception at the end of the gig. We had to, mm. you know, we stood by the door thanking people. The comment we got back from a lot of people who attended our gig at least was, uh, and they, this man said, I've been to three gigs at the Fringe and yeah. they're all about people belly aching." about belly came about what they don't get, what they haven't mm. got, about how this... And then they said, nobody's got any joy anymore. And, and I think that's where my comedy stems from. I mm. like happy, I like joy, mm. I like I like to talk about things like that. I don't get that angry about things. And even mm. then, it's kind of always got a happy slant to it. Mm. So, But for people who do that, I also enjoy watching people like that, mm. personally. I like, enjoy the comedy of it. Mm. Um, so I like darker comedians uh, mm. uh, and who do things. But... But it's not me. And also, it was interesting to hear that the public came along to actually pay, because this was one of the free gig. People pay to come and see us. Mm. That's what they wanted to go see. That's why I like comedy. It's a, It's got so many different rooms or mm. different place, or different types of comedy you can have. Mm. But I don't think there's ever one style that works. Mm. I think in certain areas, um, one style becomes more prominent. Mm. And people have this obsession about um, saying something. Power to their elbow, if that's what they want to do, mm. and they can make it make it funny. Yeah, then, then exactly. power to the that, and that's the that's hard it. thing because you get people come up stage and, and and you think it's just a therapy session yeah it's true and you get depressed with them <laughs> yeah totally because it happens right? it's <laughs> yeah. like oh god this has just happened to me okay it's real but it's not funny yet yeah. it's not funny and, and, and that's the thing yeah. but but then that's what uh, that's what stages are for I mean I've, I've been fortunate to have paid gigs as well as open gigs mm. and um, but I'm just a sucker for when there's an audience there mm. I just want to make them laugh yeah. and I don't really want to do I, I've, on the few occasions I've done totally new things I've always felt like I've cheated people mm. because it hasn't been fully worked out. Because you know yourself, when, mm. you, when you write something, mm. you say it out loud, you think, oh, I should have changed that mm. word or I should have put this a different way or that came in a bit too early mm. for them to you know, accept that I would say that. Do you listen to yourself back? That, you know what? That is my New Year's resolution. Mm. I tape... <laughs> I don't know if you do this. Yeah. I tape all my gigs yeah. and I go, right, okay, I'm going to listen to it back and see where my pauses are, mm. my ums, my ahs. And recently I got people to start videoing me, which actually I have watched because mm. I just love looking at myself. <laughs> and um, that's a mirror there. Mm, nice. Yeah. I did that because I found that it, that was the more beneficial thing. But I need to do it this year because you learn from it. And mm. watching the videos recently, I watched my last kind of uh, five, six performances... I thought, oh, I didn't, I didn't know I did that. Oh, I, I, and I say um a lot. Or I should stop moving around so much there. And things like that. Or when I ducked and dived or did this little kind of strange movement, people found that funny. I should do some more of that. And, and that, was, that was interesting. And listening to yourself, you can hear the pauses, you can hear what works, where the laughs are coming. And I listened to about a minute of it and I go, oh, yeah, no, it seems to go all right. Yeah, fine. Uh, not learnt from it and so this year is my <laughs> just yeah. like cutting yourself yeah isn't I it? know and this year resolution I am going to go to backlog and listen to it's, things yeah it's humbling as you know yourself you, every gig needs something different yeah you can either have like you know a gig that needs a bit of welly or a gig you just go no, you know what right let's just like just like, feel this out and like you know just drop the, the, the words into your ears rather than just force it down the yeah. necks yeah. Go, okay this is what's happening look at this and this oh, okay and there's more sort of deafness and sort of like you know I mean without like, like martial arts or something like that you know you or some sort of any skill that just has just needs that little bit of sort of refining like kind of you know that just a, a little stroke or technique that you just drop it there yeah. and rather than just go bam this is funny it needs that sometimes but yeah. other times when it's just the room's ready you can just go okay there you go there you 
you drop it in like yeah. the, the proper rooms you know yeah. like because you know when you're when you're bloody out in the badlands and kind of trying to peek <laughs> it out in like pub X down there right okay guys we're going to go with this shit mm. okay this is the bag of shit that you will like <laughs> okay not this other stuff this really you know yeah sure do whatever that you you should be true to you but you know when it's not going to work in certain places you know yeah. that yeah. that's how it is isn't it you know, you it's, it is interesting you know I, I, like I say I, I think there is everyone's got a different way of doing their comedy and mm. no, I don't think anyone is, is right I think that people have preferences to things mm. I think it goes through waves like people do like have preferences of um, pe- people kind of being real uh, and all that kind of stuff yeah. and, and, and it's great and I enjoy that kind of comedy too and you're right I think certain places want to hear that mm. and certain places just want to hear yeah people coming up and doing and, and yeah. you know doing kind of familiar things maybe in a slightly unfamiliar way but talk um, about Tesco's yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the bagging area bagging, come on the Come bagging area, the bagging area. Yeah, we, <laughs> we haven't heard one bagging area joke <laughs> yeah. today yeah and that's exactly it yeah um, <laughs> that's I've classic, never I've it? never done a joke about a bagging area <laughs> I could never think of one because <laughs> <laughs> it's just so expected yeah, aren't it's they? expected yeah. nothing expected it was unexpected in the bagging but um, uh, oh, yeah a bag for life a bag oh, for life yeah I've got so many bags for life now I'm immortal <laughs> thank you thank you I'm here till Friday but people yeah, you know yourself people do like to hear that mm. and sometimes when I've tried experimental things and I think it's probably also the confidence factor I think there's also that because mm. you, when you know when you have your, your, your kind of bankers yeah. um, which um, you know will get a laugh kind of 89% of the time mm. you know you, you, you belt those out kind of um, sometimes you get lazy actually that's one thing mm. about listening or seeing the video I realise I've got a story which is my go-to story and it also lands a lot and once I heard myself doing it I thought that's so lazy still got a laugh and everything but I just I felt ashamed of myself for not mm. having put yeah. the energy into it that yeah. I would normally do it was kind of like yeah, rah, 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 yeah. yeah. Rah, rah, rah. you laugh here mm. okay fine it, it was interesting to kind of see myself do that I thought I must never get lazy mm. I think you do get complacent oh you too you too you think uh, this works? I might as well just like this. Just yeah, roll it out. Yeah, it's fine. Because when, um, uh, you know, when people take pictures of gigs and things, and uh, I had somebody kind of uh, on the Facebook thingy um, said, uh, "Oh, like this picture of you, I know exactly which bit of your act that is." <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> no, it was it's nice. I mean, the thing it's about great. it is, I, I, I think also, um, I've been watching a lot of older comedy, past comedy, kind of the comedy greats, as mm. I like to think. Who? Well, when I was younger, I used to love the, watching the comedians. And I used yeah. to record the comedians and love all the jokes. And we go to school the next next after the weekend and tell everybody the jokes we all heard. And it was all kind of like a memory thing, like collecting cards or whatever mm. kids did at the time. So I loved all that. And I like, I like Ken Goodwin, was a, a kind of chap whose catchphrase was called Settle Down. And he used to laugh. He just used to laugh a lot. And he would laugh before he got to the microphone. People were just laughing and not knowing why they were laughing. He was one of those fun of funny bones kind of characters. Mm-hmm. Um, really liked him. Um, Frank Carson, obviously. I say obviously. Obvs. Um, as a young, <laughs> you youngsters out there might say. I liked him. I have to say, I did find Bernard Manning very funny at the time. Mm. Even though I was young, I probably didn't understand a lot of the jokes. I just liked his, his speaking. I always... I love her. Mm. The content maybe not so much, but uh, the, I just like the way he spoke. Um, Stan Boardman. It was Mike Collier with his on off again. Mm. Um, with the mic- he had a thing where he would pretend to speak to a microphone, and the microphone would cut out. Mm. So he'd be speaking to you and hello everybody, and, and, and on off. And, could you fix this? Phone and all this kind of stuff. I can't do it as you probably have just heard. All that kind of thing. I liked all that kind of silliness. Liked, totally loved um, Cannon and Ball. I loved them guys. Amazing kind of old hoofers and professionals and loved all what they do. But also, well, my kind of all time favourites are Morecambe and Wise, really. That's, I didn't realise how much of an influence mm. they had on my life, comedy wise and just general wise, because I think everyone cracks Morecambe and Wise jokes and they don't know where it comes from mm. until one day you see one of the shows and go, my God, that's where that comes from. So I liked, I liked watching all those kind of guys. Bob Monkhouse, recently Ken Dodd, God rest his soul. Yeah. All, all those kind of characters as well. Yeah. Um, that was Bob Monkhouse, not Ken Dodd. He's just got a knighthood. All those kind of characters, you realise they lived in a different world, how tough it was. They had to make a living from that. But also the work that they put in. Yeah. And also, also the different houses they played to, the experience they've got. Yeah. Um, so it was, it, I, I find all that. But also I find all that stuff joyful and it makes me laugh. Yeah. And I realised, I was thinking about changing stuff, I think I must get more serious. Now other comedians are being more serious, about mm. special things, personal things, all that type of stuff. Mm. And I just, I just not, it's not, I don't want to share that with people. Personally, for me, mm. I don't find it funny. Yeah. 
I don't, know, I don't want to talk about kind of crikey um, things that happened. Uh, I was going to say something personal to totally um, flip it around, but I kind of I don't want to talk about kind of you know um, tragedies that happened in the past or yeah. things like that. I, I, I just I'd like to make people happy. Mm. I, I'd rather have myself as a butt of the joke. But I, I just just watching those characters and I realise actually how much work yeah. people put in, and, and that's I think that's the key. Because you go through that phase when you just kick off, you're thinking, well, I am so funny, it's hilarious, I've made my friends laugh, I've done really well. Yeah. And then you go and maybe st- step up and go to a kind of a better gig than or kind of, you know, just an open gig and uh, you realise actually you ain't that funny at all, yeah. really. And, no one has thought of this joke before. Yeah, no, this, yeah. Unexpected item in the bag. bag yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's sort of, yeah that is, that is the classic one. Mm-hmm. And uh, you, you kind of yeah. think, you, ha- you have to kind of like start trying to think yeah. but you, you go through a progression and I don't think I think there's a very few rare people that when they kick off they are naturally really funny mm-hmm. really quickly mm-hmm. and they have a real kind of amazing kind of just rise within the kind of ranks and they start being on pro bills and mm-hmm. TV and stuff and you think wow that's amazing I love I love seeing that yeah. I, I love seeing people um, who I might have gigged with you know kind of three months ago four months yeah. ago suddenly being on telly or being kind of like fated yeah. in, in kind of a great gig I think that's just absolutely fantastic getting a sitcom well done man you put yeah. the work in it's yeah, good to see I know. it yeah. I, I, I do I, I, I never I personally my, my kind of reason for doing it is because I just like to be good mm. I'd like to be good enough to have an hour's worth of stuff yeah. and when people walked out the door goes I really enjoy that mm. that's it yeah. and I think if it's right for any other kind of movement in the industry yeah. or people, you know, will like what you do, then super darts, mm. off, you, off you go and, and, you know, you'll become famous. But I'm not, I don't pursue it. Mm. I just want to be good. And, yeah. and that's, that's my whole reason for doing it. I like making people laugh. I want to be good. Of course, I'd love to make some money from it. Mm. Of course, I'd love a bit of recognition yeah. and all that kind of stuff. It's not the reason why I do it. Mm. And I think it's also the reason why these guys who move up also, I don't think it's the reason they do it as well. Mm. I think maybe the younger comedian probably has an idealised an idealised view of yeah well I do these gigs and I'm going to get this and pushing a bit maybe a bit more pushing and power to their elbow because you know if you don't ask you don't get that's true it's not my cup of tea but I'm power to their elbow but I just love seeing kind of you know um, some of the guys just take off you think wow wow and one of them is now kind of um, a YouTube sensation as well many moons ago. Um, well, I still do this gig. It's a lovely gig. I love this gig. TNT in mm. Kentish Town. Um, a chap called Joe Charman on there. Yes. And he's a totally lovely guy. He's this fantastic beatboxing um, thing. Uh, and now he's known as the skills guy. Now, mm. I've got skills. What are you going to do about it? Mm. And he has become a phenomenon in um, the YouTube world. Mm. And he makes his living from social media. So he used to stand up mm. and comedy. And now he does he does that. And, and makes a living from it in a short space. But he mm. put the work and effort in. Mm. And he did Vine when it kicked off. And he just kept ploughing and ploughing and, 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 and trying to develop what he did. Mm. And now he's this kind of this guy who now lives a wonderful life doing this, but he works mm. bloody hard for it. That's it. And I love that. I, I, mm. I, I love the fact that, you know, we was once in a pub kind of mm. uh, chatting away. And, yeah, um, it's, uh, it's, it's achievable. You've just got to put the work in. And yeah. You've got to do it for the right reasons, as you yeah. said. You've got to do it for you rather than do it for, like, you know, go, oh, I'm going to get this fame. I'm going to get. Don't look at the accolades. Don't look at those. Those trophies that are the, the the lines on people's CVs. Okay, they do help. For yeah. Put your, like that thing you, you yeah, the brighter thing helps us get people it, in. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I mean, you know, I've never won. A, I will never win a competition in my life. Mm. Um, I've tried to go in for a few competitions. Absolutely failed miserably. Mm. Never got past. I think all I got past one of the Muse Moose one. I got. I went past the ninety second. There used to be a thing for the Muse Moose. Mm. You get kind of loads of girls and boys in kind of in a room, and you'd go up and do ninety seconds. Yeah. And you got judged on whether or not. That's it, and then that. you get through to the next phase, mm. um, which I got through to the next phase, and then totally corpsed on stage. Oh, and no. um, never that, that was it. Yeah, it was the end of it. And uh, I, I thought I will never go for a competition again because mm. uh, I'm rubbish at them. I always get incredibly nervous. Yeah. Just don't do my best. Mm. And You're not enjoying it, is it? I'm not enjoying it. I'm kind of think I'm here to. And I thought, well, you know, some people are naturally good at competitions, and you, but the one thing I, we did find out, and by sheer chance, was that if you do win something or get a handle of some kind, like the, the Brighton thing people will go to maybe your gig or look at you differently mm. because there's an expected level of uh, competence which yeah. other people don't get. So I totally understand people doing competitions. Mm. No, totally. Kind of yeah, I mean, they need, you need something to write on your CV as well. I mean, we're saying yeah. that, that, you know, they, that you should, you know, you should, that they're not good for, for you or us. And it's like you just think that, well, you need something to write on the poster, don't you? It's yeah. like, you know, guy with a microphone... Okay, yeah. have you done this before? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay, times. You know this. Yeah, is it. Oh, we are, t- I, 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 believe me, we will have kind of you know Brighton Award winners uh, on our poster for this year. List of gigs. Yeah. Just a gig, gig number. Gig. How many gigs yeah, you've yeah. done? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've done three hundred and sixty-five gigs. Um, yeah. 
And I've got one original chowder. <laughs> I've done all of them. Yeah. I've mixed the order up, though. I haven't put them all in the same order. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's yeah. making it difficult for myself. Yes, you know? yes. I left my book in the back in area. <laughs> Call back. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 a, it, it's a funny old game comedy, but it's, yeah. you know, it, it's, I just really enjoy it. I think anyone who does comedy would like the success that, uh, or that, that you know, the Macintyres mm. uh, have of this world. And I, and I again, I just, I, I, I just hate the, the people hating. You know, I, mm-hmm. I just, uh, everyone goes, well, it's somebody but McIntyre. You may not like the guy, yeah. you may not appreciate his humour and all that kind of stuff, mm. but by crikey, I think he has done what most comedians would aspire to do. Totally. Be popular, yeah. have a TV programme, be well respected, uh, and make money and make a living from being funny. Yeah. God Bless him. I, I personally love him. Mm. Um, 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 I know a lot of people don't, but I just think power to his bloody elbow. Yeah. You know? I mean, there's, 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 every, there's something for everyone, as we said. You know, there's different types of comedy that people that suit people suit certain areas, and people want that kind of comedy because because yeah. maybe they haven't been to comedy before. Just that we've been in it so so long that you yeah. kind of get to a stage that you go, God, I've seen that so yes. many times. That you get so jaded. Yeah. I mean, even gigging, you get jaded. But like watching it as well, you go. I gotta research this to see what's going on, what the, what the, the status quo of comedy is, what people are interested in. Yeah. And uh, but then again, you get to a certain stage. You go, well, I can only do comedy that's, that comes from me, and yeah. that's just honest, honest and truthful to me. And so you can, in the end, you can just bludgeon your way through all these crowds because at the beginning, I think you go, "What's funny? Okay, I'll take that. I'll, I'll not not take it, but I'll watch that and I'll I'll learn." And I'll go, okay, that's just kind of style of comedy. And then you go, "No." I, I can't. I'm not going to be influenced by these things anymore. I'm just going to do the thing that I like to do. Yeah. And that's the thing. I guess you're doing. You're not gigging as much. You're just kind of going. Okay. I'm just sit down in the room. Go. What, what is it? What, what? What's the best thing about me? Okay. Listen to all the stuff. Let's just dissect it. Let's you know make it better. What could? What more could go in that? Okay. How does this fit? You know. Okay. How am I trying too much? Am I doing too much of this? And what? That's it. Just yeah. It's, it, 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 it is. It is that kind of thing. And and it kind of I like to MC as well. I've had a lot of opportunities yeah. to MC. Great. Really enjoy that. I get asked to do that on, on regular, and again, I think because I, I, I jolly, I'm a jolly kind of warm, character. You're, yeah, you're yeah, high energy, you're and, warm, and, like, yeah, and I don't. I also get, um, don't get in the way of other mm. acts as well. Mm. So I let the acts do their stuff. I don't. I, I initially when I first emceed, I think one of the, the things I learnt as I went on, don't do mater- I, I did my own material in bits. Yeah. So basically, it wasn't emceed. It was basically my act spread over an hour, yeah. an hour and a half, or whatever it was. And you try to get a spot for that gig. Yeah. Like, oh. I've done it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, uh, and then you can't go back and do your own stuff. Yeah. So, I, I, but that's confidence and experience, and um, yeah. uh, you get better at that, and you get better to reacting. One, one of the best bits of advice, funny was, was a comedy at school when mm. kind of um, they used to get different kind of pros in. There was a chap, um, ch- a chap like, like nobody knows this guy's fantastic. Um, chap called Adam Bloom, yes, is absolutely amazing, amazing character, um, comedian has done it all as well, kind of career wise, I think. He came in and just chatted to us newbies, kind of, you know, going, ooh, ooh, what would you like know being funny on a stage? The best thing he said when somebody asked the invariable question, every, everyone asks you if you do comedy, is like, or oh, heckling, heckling, everyone asks you about heckling. And I've never been there, it's a place in Germany. Oh, what, what a horrendously <laughs> funny joke. Oh, search oh, that well. I got that one from the back in area, I can tell you that. Oh, sweet Lord. Um, yeah. But, um, uh, no, yeah. and, uh, <laughs> Love that your own jokes, dreadful. Um, but they're so good. They are so good. Classic. Yeah, classic. 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 <laughs> and he said that heckling was a gift. And yeah. when he said that, it was like, wow, what a brilliant thing to say. Then you didn't fear it anymore because you think it's a gift. If somebody has said something to you, you know, either take it on, deal with it or not. A comedian that I gigged with jah, middle of last year, a lady called Jenny, Jenny Collier, yes. who was absolutely superb. Mm. She was the headliner of the gig I was at, and she was being heckled by some chap in the audience who was saying some nonsensical rubbish or whatever. And she just turned to me and she goes, well, thanks for that, but it's not very useful right now. <laughs> yeah. I was like, wow, yeah. that was amazing. It was absolutely amazing. And the yeah. way she just kind of dealt with it was I thought, oh, wow, I want to be you. Mm. Because that was just brilliant. You know, again, whenever I've been heckled, I've either smiled and said, oh, thanks very much for that. Mm. It was lovely. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and then carried on. <laughs> and, yeah. and sometimes I've dressed it. Well, I've dressed it, but not necessarily... Mm in the way that a heckler wants you to do. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't get heckled a lot. Yeah. I, I, once, I once went to one of those, the way a funny project run, used to run a thing called Heckle Night. They, they, it's basically a night where you go and do your comedy mm. and they encourage the audience to heckle you. Mm. And you have to see how you handle that. Yeah. And um, so I went, right, and I need to toughen up. As a comedian, I need to toughen up. I need to go and get heckled. Yeah. I'm going to go to this thing. I'm uh, going to go to it. And I didn't make nobody heckled me. And kind of MC at the end, oh, and it came out and goes, 
I said, nobody heckled me. He goes, yeah, you're too nice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh. <laughs> oh that's it. So I should start picking on people. Yeah. So, but um, it, it wasn't it wasn't me. I've only had a, a few heckles. Not that's not an invitation heckle, by the way. But yeah. I've only had a few heckles, and yeah. mostly they're being you know. And the MC stuff really helps, doesn't it? Oh, so, the MC stuff and, and was did, amazing. Did you do improv yeah. as well? I did, I did. I've done improv with Hoopla. Um, oh, yeah. uh, I did um, some of their kind of um, improv for um, stand ups and. Great. Uh, that was great fun, and that also helped as well mm. because you didn't. Because sometimes you get bunny in the headlights type thing when somebody throws something at you, you go, Hoo! but now I, I like to think that if anything actually happens, um, I would be able to deal with it, and I do, and I and I, and I, I really enjoy that. I, 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 the, I like the improv thing, I do when people look like someone in the audience mm. rather than doing I look like this person, uh, I will say, My goodness, we've got a celebrity in tonight, and some people um, you can tell whether people are actually going to go with it or not and if they don't go with it you just kind of back off mm. and find somebody else who wants yeah. to play oh that's good John I'm glad you, you've said you can tell I can never tell I just go in with it anyway <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. that's the interesting thing about it actually because there are different careers in comedy I mean because mm. you know I, I, I think well I know, I know I would like to go end up doing comedy clubs and um, getting gigs and, mm. and write my own hour and all that type of stuff um, but there are other careers within comedy. Yes. You, you know, there are people who do do cruise liners mm. and uh, and all that kind of stuff. And you think that would be a great gig. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm kind of being old, kind of older now. Kind of, I think if I found comedy, kind of, even though I went to it, I had no idea how people became comedians. Mm. I think you know, I can understand. I have a different view or outlook on what I want from my comedy to maybe some who's in their kind of twenties, thirties, mm. who kind of like maybe see its potential career. Yeah. Club that I um, have been associated with was one as uh, Matt Rada, which is kind of big green city. That is a really lovely, lovely... Great room. Great room. It's, mm. it's a brilliant comedy room. But again, it just, it just barely makes enough money to run mm. the gig. So, you know, it, it's never, it's never going to be much more than just a fantastic great room. Well, there's a great audience and all that kind of stuff. I mm. learned an awful lot of... I emceed that quite regularly mm. and I learned a lot from there. Because the audience were, not, were actually proper paying, paying audience, punters, yeah, yeah. paying punters who came to see comedy. Mm. And even though it's new, materi- it's new material and such like, um, they still expect a certain level of proficiency. And mm. I think most people, when they've gone there, um, have gone... Okay, I think I might step it out of a tad. So that that's been quite that that's been quite a good experience, mm. and that is an awful lot of fun. Mm. Um, it may or may not come at the moment. It's kind of um, resting, I believe. It's the theatre's gone dark at the moment, darling, mm. and um, uh, it may or may not come back this year. Oh, no. So um, we'll see how that flies. It's all a matter of as many things are finance. Right. That was a great gig, and again, I learned a lot from Emerson in there. There was uh, we, we used to get a regular crowd in, and I remember one night when I did my usual. Hey, has anyone been to a comedy? No, because you have to make noise yeah. and get people to be noisy. Mm. So anyone been to you know this particular gig before? Mm. Uh, give us a give us a cheer, and pretty much everyone in the room went. Way! It was a lovely nice. Big packed out and one lady went I haven't and I went oh so I basically got off stage and just sat beside her and went all right let me just tell you this and of course nobody could see me I was just chatting to her and, and everyone just laughed because I was chatting to her personally about mm. the gig and you know what happens and, and yeah. funny people come on and, and you'd like to laugh and all this kind of yeah. stuff and and she really enjoyed that um, yeah. attention but we've had some mad we've had some mad guests there we had a very drunk viking man oh, once yeah. who so uh, he was getting on stage to punch one of the acts and I don't know why, because the act was really lovely, and, mm. and I don't know what he said to offend him, whether it was his, he didn't have a great grasp of English, so maybe he said something in Viking language, which was probably terribly offensive, right. but, you know, like, mm. you know, items in the bagging area might have meant, I'm going to come and kill you in yeah. Viking, and was getting on the stage, and I thought, my God, and I thought, what do I do as an MC? So I ran up there and grabbed hold of the, of the, of the, of the, of the um, of, of the audience member I said what are you doing mate what are you doing yeah. and he said uh, I don't like him I don't like him he was quite drunk he was called Eric this man Eric the Viking wow said, well that's weird uh, and so we sat him down I apologised to the comedian and, mm. cause, you know, he was handling it but then when he got on stage I thought no I can't I can't have anyone being punched here oh, so really I kind of like, yeah so I kind of like you know, if anyone's going to be punching it's going to be weird <laughs> um, and, but uh, with joy <laughs> punch in the air with happiness <laughs> and I have nothing but love for everybody so I kind of grabbed hold of him and, and, and dragged him off and then then every time I went on stage, I just checked that the Viking was okay. Yeah. And his friends were absolutely aghast. Um, they just didn't know. Because he was a suited gentleman. He wasn't like, you know, a thug type yeah. person. He was a guy yeah. in the like, late 40s. But, yeah. but somehow he just seemed to take Business coverage. Viking. Yeah, no, it was no. really weird. Yeah, yeah. yeah corporate yeah. Viking. Yeah, he's um, uh, corporate Viking. The weirdest probably, thing yeah. ever. And then at the end of the, the, end of the gig, mm. I got him up on stage. Yeah. And... Um, to kind of like you know because um, we became friends then we kind of like well, there was a lot of love in and I uh, asked him to love the comedian and everyone everyone was happy oh, and loved nice and um, healed and everyone then it kind of everyone was healed and uh, and then we got up on stage brought the house down it was kind of it was weird it was weird people said to give people the microphone but he was actually hilarious I mean but, that that thing as well that Eric the Viking is yeah. it's like look at this this 
Eric the Viking. Is this Eric the Viking here in a suit? Yeah. Did he have a beard as well? He had a beard. He was incredibly um, rotund. Um, I'm rotund, but he was incredibly rotund. Yeah. And if Eric the Viking was listening, I'd just like to say, that's not the case. I'm just doing this for comedy effect. <laughs> but he was a bit of a fat git. Yeah. It, just, it was just the weirdest thing ever. Oh. And, but it, went, it all went well. And uh, the Polish comedian who just like was bemused, he said, mm. I've no idea what I said. Mm. That made this man want to get up stage and punch me. You might have just looked at him. You know, sometimes, yeah. let's say you go to somebody in the audience, mm. but he was the wrong person to go to. Like, it's like, it is like that thing as well, that sometimes you're in a club and like you see someone just eyeballing you for no reason. Yeah. And you're like, wondering what you've done. You had, like, you, you could be sober and they, you know, they're a little bit drunk, right? But you're yeah. like, why are they, like, why me? Yeah. Why is it, they do, what is it about my face <laughs> that they think that that is the person that I want to start something with tonight? I hate that person. And you haven't done anything. But now that I'm walking. sitting here looking at your face. Oh, you're right. Yes, I, do, I have a very <laughs> punchable, a I have a very punchable <laughs> face. Pass me that large rock. Uh, <laughs> that's what it's for. That yeah. is what that rock. Thank for. you. Hold on one second. Oh uh, yes, it's, it's nice and sharp as well. And it's quite heavy, you know. But it's... yeah, people just uh, and you have to accept. I think also the other thing what you said earlier on. You know, I want to be liked. I think ultimately, regardless of the type of comedy you do, you want people to like or respect you. Yeah. Um, and listen to me. Nobody listens to me. Um, <laughs> Please. I love, love that's why I'm going to stay here forever in this lovely warm room. Um, it, it, it's, I think you do want to be liked. And when people don't, mm. it's actually... Because this is the thing you love to do. You love to do. It's kind of... You know, I'm not going to use the word um, passion. I just did. <laughs> but... Um, no, ironically. But, 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 right, I, I did it ironically. So, yeah. Meta comedy for you kids. Um, and... Uh, it, it was here. Yeah. yeah, yeah there it swish. Is. Swish. <laughs> Slam dunk in the bagging area. And... Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, what the hell was wrong about? Uh, sorry, you're talking about yeah. your, your love your love uh, yeah I love you I love your face oh, and yeah. I want to get that man who touched you yeah. um, but um, he you know it, people just like you know it's what you love and then when people don't really like it mm. it actually hurts a lot more oh, yeah. and, I, and, I, and I thought you're yeah, going to have a tough skin and you know it's okay and mm. whatever you, you do kind of go oh because you really that's the thing that out of all the things you do in your life mm. that you want to excel at and you want to shine at Mm. And when you don't, it actually hurts a lot more. And mm. that's the thing, as as you get more into the comedy thing, mm. you want to be better at it. And when you're not, it's frustrating. But sometimes you have to go through all the frustration to get to the next bit. Yeah, like the breakthrough. Yeah, yeah. As you were saying, yeah, I was saying, no, it's, 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 it's very much that. And um, if I was on X Factor, I'd say, it's a journey. And my dog did die. And, uh, oh, really? No, did no. your dog die? No, no, actually. No. Have when I had a dog, I mean, it died quite a while ago. Crikey. Um, no, I'm not going to go for the X Factor. Thing. What kind of dog was it? And uh, it, was a, it was a Basset. Basset, Basset Hound, wow. about 15 years old. Hector he was, lovely. Yeah. The, actually, that was a dog that made me laugh because yeah. they are so stubborn as animals. Yeah. Basically, he would um, would take him out for a walk and then if he didn't want to go somewhere, he'd just lie down. <laughs> yeah. like, he, didn't, he didn't care where he lay. It was, if it was the middle of the road, he would lay down. Yeah. And you have people in their cars honking horns and he'd go, yeah, we're not going that way. And they go, come on, Hector, come on. And uh, he's not going, and he, and he says, I'm, I'm kind of one going that way. So if you walked in the opposite direction, you go, yeah, let's go that way and walk yeah. off. And I would laugh my head off and people in the cars go, you better control an animal. But he controlled me. He was a lovely, lovely dog. Heavy Slob- as well, though. Yeah, he was about four and a half stone. Yeah. Um, he was a f- big slobbery dog. Yeah. And um, uh, I cried my eyes out when that dog, dog died. Never, ever go down. <laughs> and I've got cats at the moment. I've got three cats. Uh, dogs, um, I wait till I retire and um, get another dog. And um, not long now, though. <laughs> but, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, yeah, but that was absolutely lovely. Lovely dog. And you've got yeah. some lovely dogs. I've got, I've got, I've got like, the, the Labrador and the, and the Husky, yeah. The thing is, that I was telling you, did I tell you to finish that story? I got the, the wife and a, a, a flute for Christmas. Oh, right. Like she filmed them last night, right? And every time the the wife plays this like North American uh, flute, it's called the Monarch, uh, yeah. and uh, this is named the flute, right? Not the dog. And <laughs> like, so she plays this, and and like she was watching him when she played it. He was like howling in like harmonizing with yeah, the, with oh, it. wow. But like then she start tried to film the Labrador, right? And the Labrador w- realized that she was doing something and kind of hid behind the bed. Oh, but there's a mirror to the right of the bed <laughs> and so he was like, hiding there he's like I can't see me <laughs> and so as, as she was playing the, the flute he, he was like I'm not going to hell I'm not going to hell and then one <laughs> note it went <laughs> and you see his head just coming up over the bed it's yeah. so funny oh. it's so funny it made me laugh so much because he was like he was really trying his best yeah. he was like like a little <laughs> whale yeah <laughs> It was but, so funny. Oh, that's so lovely. And, and my wife won't let me put the video up on, on YouTube. Oh. Really. so annoying. I know. She's spoiled my fun. But that's yeah. a, that's a lot. Because animals are funny. I kind of, mm. Cats cats also kind of... I do love cats. And um, our cats are great because they'll do something. Or, or, and, but they'll... I love the way they hide behind curtains. 
but they just put their head behind the curtain. Yeah. So the entire body's outside, totally. but the head's behind the curtain. I just find that hilarious. Mm. And they just, because they, they can't see you, you must be able to see them. Invisible. Yeah, amazing. Do you do write for any other things? Do you write for no, books? Or... No, I, 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 I don't. I kind of, I have, I've written, I do two types of writing. I do one where I have a conscious stream of thought writing, right. where I just write anything that comes in, literally anything that comes into my mind, I just type it down, type right. it down. And then I kind of look back at it and think, oh gosh, that was funny. And I would do that for about, um, about 30 minutes of just going, uh, cool, what am I doing? Uh, and just kind of, whatever thoughts come into your head, write that down. Mm. That's actually been quite interesting. For the comedy thing, I do try and, I suppose try and structure it in, in the sense of, um, right, I'm going to talk about this thing. Mm. and Or I'm going to try and make, uh, at the moment I'm doing a thing, a pun challenge. There's a, a comedian called Mike Lord, who I know, yep. you know, um, who runs Jam Comedy with a few other mm. wonderful people. He did a pun challenge last year where every day he's come up with a pun. And some of them were not as good as others. And I found, and I thought, well, I might try that. And mm. after three days, it's bloody hard. Mm. And to come up with stuff that is funny. So bloody power to your elbow, Mr. Mike Lord. Mm. And, uh, but I did write to him and say, look, you know, would you mind if I kind of went into bat and took over on that? And very graciously, he said, yeah, do, I, I know you could just kind of do it. But I just thought I'd ask because, you know, he, was, mm. he put his handle on it. So I started trying to do that and writing puns. And I set aside about 45 minutes to try and pun, write a pun. And um, I normally do it. Break, at the moment, breakfast, I have my breakfast, and mm. then I go, right, what pun shall I write? And then right. I kind of think about it, and then during the day, and try and get it on posted by eight o'clock. That has been a bit of a challenge, and right. I run puns by my good family, and they go, oh, that was awful, oh, that was good. And there's um, various other kind of little kind of comedy networks I send the puns to, and they either mm. say thumbs up or thumbs down. Want to try and write more things for a show. I've half written a one man show, mm. which I want to go and do in 2018. Mm. And I think that's when I will probably, um, whether I'm going to car- carry on mm. doing I, I, that's my little goal to do a one man show. Right. I've never been to Edinburgh gig. I've heard so many horror stories and happy mm. stories that I don't know which ones are true. So I think you have to go and do it yourself. Yes. Um, it's, it's, it's what you, again, what we're saying before, it's what you want out of it. Mm. If your aim is just to get better, it's going to be a great place because you can do so many gigs you can refine so much material up there um, and like, but if you're doing your hour show well then it's, it can be really quite I mean you know your first hour or whatever it is or your first you know your I mean it's, well, it depends on how many people get into your show isn't it yeah. if you've got to cancel shows and no one turns up and it's you know it's what, what are you getting out of it yourself because yeah. there's breakthrough moments and every time you get up on that stage if you can be self aware enough to pick them out you're like oh this is it oh you know this is it and then that joy that you have like you're doing it for you, you know, as yeah. well as them, of course. But you don't make want to make them laugh. But you're doing it for you. This is this is your thing. This is you know, fuck it, it keeps your brain, it stops your brain from thinking about mortality. Yeah. This is, and you need to find every bit of joy in life. And this is the thing that gives you the joy. Fuck it. If they, if you get a bad review, fuck it. I'm still doing the thing that I love. Yeah, yeah. You know, so that is okay. And and okay, people people didn't turn up for me that year, but that's fine. There's one or two people did. They might come back next year. Yeah, and that's it. It's, it's, uh, I, I, uh, yeah, you're, you're spot on there because it, it is. I, I want to do it because I do love doing it. Ultimately, that's what I, that's what I want. To, I want to get me hour in. I want to do me hour. Yeah. Well, because because it's more going to be more of a like a lot of uh, things. It's going to be more of a real thing. Because you've got an hour, mm. so you can actually really elaborate. And it's going to be you know, that's most going to be a, going to be a story about them. Ha <laughs> mm. ha! Uh, but it's it's something which I've kind of half written. I've already tested the ending mm. on a few because I've written the ending first on a few um, people I respect, and they've just said blister, absolutely blistering okay. ending. Mm. Um, you've got to go do that. I've been kind of slightly kind of slow on that because I started writing in, 20, in 2014, mm. 2014. Just been doing bits and bits, but it's half written now and I kind of wanted to spend more time writing this year and to get it right, really. Because yeah. I don't have a problem with performing. I, I'm being, you know, kind of, I, I kind of enjoy it. I still get nervous before. It's funny, mm. I still get nervous. Mm. A couple of occasions recently, um, I kind of did have, I, I suddenly got a dry mouth, which I never mm. ever had before. That was really quite amazing. Yeah. And I kind of thought, where does this come from? Yeah. And then I could just force myself out of it on stage. But So it was quite weird. But um, one thing I like about um, the comedy thing, I'm, I'm sorry, I won't get to talk about comedy, but it's when I've gone to gigs and spoken to people who are doing it professionally like mm. you know, and making money on being on television and being on the panel shows and um, you know um, doing the, the big gigs that kind mm. of... Um, the Apollo and all those kind of places, they are the loveliest of people. Mm. They mm. have the time for you. Mm. And you kind of think, I don't know any other profession. I, I've only had lovely experiences from, from that, um, from meeting these people. And they have been nothing but kindness and chatty and, mm. you know, and all that kind of stuff. And, and you know, don't bug them, but you kind of like, they will just 
give you a bit of advice, mm. and it was it, it's absolutely amazing, yeah. absolutely amazing. Some of you you've seen on on yourself, and you think oh, I think you're brilliant. Mm. They sit down and talk to you like you're an equal. And they think I'm nowhere, I'm not even in a, a hundredth or a mm. thousandth of what you do. But they're just talking to you because they appreciate how you're trying, how, you, how you're trying. I am very trying, thank you. But, um, <laughs> I've never liked you now. Let's just say it now. Oh, your, that's, face uh, your face, your face. Yeah, my dad kind of bullied me in school. <laughs> yeah. the school teacher that used to beat yeah. the shit out of me. Yeah, I'm actually yeah. in the back in area, <laughs> um, which was uh, just another callback. Yeah, and, and I, I, that's what I found kind of humbling. And people go, "My God, that person stormed it at the Apollo," and then they're doing this kind of open night, and they're just nice as pie. Mm. Absolutely amazing. So I kind of I like that element to it as well. The camaraderie of the whole yeah. thing, and it's, it's it's that thing as well that when you meet these people, and, and like g- generally people at, at gigs are pr- I found as well pretty nice. Yeah. But you again are, are incredibly likable, Johnny, and like I think that I'm quite nice. Oh, okay, I, I can say it now. I, I, th- I think I'm quite sociable as well. Yes. But I think that you know the old uh, is that is it, is it the um, is it Buddhism that you know, hateful people live in a hateful world isn't yeah it? so you know if you think oh well they'll be my friend that's fine and I remember once when I was a kid my mum used to take me to this uh, this like uh, after school sort of thing you know yeah. and when I was there there was this one as minder if you like there was a this, this centre point thing yeah and I thought that they really liked me, and then years later I found out that they absolutely fucking hated me. Wow! And, but like, because I, but I, but I was like, oh, they must, they like me, they do like me, and they didn't like me. But anyway, but that was the kind of thing, you know. So like you, you have this thing, this, this projection of what you want from the world, yeah, and that goes out. It, sometimes. It, yeah, I, th- I, th- I, th- I mean, I, I do now know that people don't like me, and um, right. some people, d- some people just don't like you. They just, they just don't it's like a, you. Yeah. Shtick the way about you, they feel that like, you know, you hack or you're kind of. Uh, this, and also outside that, some people just just take a dislike to you, and I think yeah. uh, where it used to affect me, and I think um, it kind of now it just um, doesn't. And yeah. I kind of, and I think that's what the comedy's taught me is that whilst I would love to have your approval, I would really enjoy it and I would uh, mm. value it. And uh, yeah. but if you don't give it to me, I can okay, <laughs> all right, I'll find something else you want. Yeah, yeah, I can't change your mind. It's it's kind of I know, and I don't spend my time trying to do that. I I used to in gigs where people weren't laughing, I would then hone in on the unlaughing person. Yeah. And try and make them laugh, and I forgot about the rest of the audience because yeah. it was a challenge. Yeah. Uh, and I kind of I don't do that anymore. Yeah. I thought if you don't laugh, you just don't find me funny. There's another one on in about five minutes or yeah. whatever. So yeah, they exactly. go. Um, so, not your cup of tea. Yeah, but, exactly. But like that guy Eric the Viking, you know, he just was like that wasn't his cup of tea. There's something about that guy's act just rubbed him the it wrong way. It was yeah. it was the weirdest thing ever. What it did it did teach me was the MC. And you do I, I, I react, that was helping that room because it really helped me react a lot to different people and mm. um, the classic things like you know where the MC engaging where you ask people what they do and um, you know and there was a lady there once said she did she, I do nothing so I said I said oh right that sounds like an interesting job what does it get paid and she says well better than her husband because he pays for it I said oh and then I, I spoke to the husband and said well what does she do and he says and I said well I'm a good cook and again what else does she do and he goes well you know and, and it got to the eventual kind of well she, she makes love to me mm. I said well alright then fair enough and uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I kind of like um, yeah, but you follow it isn't but it, you followed you know? it and you kind of like and you, and, you, and you went down that road but that got a laugh from mm. somebody saying no. whereas somebody would used to say oh nothing I do nothing go alright mm. but now I will pursue the nothing because the nothing is a gift mm. what is that nothing mm. uh, or or I'm not telling you, or people, uh, the other classic one is people say, oh, and, and what's your name? And they go, yeah. I, I, I'm not telling you. I say, oh, is that a Russian name? I'm not telling you. Yeah. And uh, it, it's it's stupid, but in the audience, people laugh, and the person mm. laughs as well. And then you call them, I'm not telling you for the rest of the, for the, rest of the gig. And they kind of buy into it. And it's, but, it's, but it's like that thing, isn't it? So we're, we're talking about before we start recording, we're saying that, like, you know, there's nothing that can be hacked. It's just your perspective on it. I mean, yeah. you've, got, you've got four kids, you're sending me. Yeah. And, like, you kind of, like, you have stuff about your wife as well, which you bring in too. And it's not the fact that it's hack. It's just that you, like, you know, you're, nothing's hack. It's just your perspective on it. The conversations you have are always going to be different. It's like when I ask people to come on the show, sometimes go, I want to talk about where you, where, where it is you come from, why you do comedy, why is it, why is it, what is it that started you, and what is the reason that you do it. And and then I go, oh no, it's just going to be boring. It's like no, well, in, in, everyone really has a different story of like mm. what the, the the thing that motivates them to do this. It's not a, a one size fits all. Yeah. Everyone's all got a different thing. If if they reveal themselves completely, sometimes people just don't. But you know, it, sometimes they do. They go, okay, this is why I do. It. This is this is the thing that makes me tick. And and there was something that happened to me that I needed to say that, yeah. or maybe that well, I didn't. I just wanted to give joy. But that's the thing. 
So it's like, but with your with your family, you bring that stuff in as well, do you? Do your you got four kids, right? Yeah. Do you have any stuff about that you do with it? About yeah, them? I used to do a thing. Um, in fact, one of my first um, gigs, um, uh, I used to do a thing about um, having mummy and daddy time, and not having any. When you've got four kids mm. in the house, you don't have any mummy and daddy time. Mm. I, I obviously use the expression mummy and daddy time when I'm actually meaning. You know, sexy time. Sexy time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you naughty, naughty man! Um, but um, yeah, and uh, so and that was a thing. It was kind of like twee, and it was. Um, but it was. But I remember the first time I did it, and the kids were in the audience. Oh my god! They all just died under the sofa. Uh, a, a kind of sofa. What, 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 brought a sofa to a gig. Yeah. <laughs> Why? Uh, but, um, uh, that's the kind of guy I am. I want my kids to be comfortable. And I. And, um, but, but they, and, and they just died. But fortunately, it was funny, and yeah. fortunately, got lots of laughs. Uh, and I did check it. With, I always check my good lady wife um, mm-hmm. before I do any material. I don't, I, I don't do kind of lots of uh, my, wife, my wife stuff. It was, it was, it was funny, and um, it, it was about us trying to get together and, and me trying to do a sexy face and all that kind mm. of stuff, uh, which of course was the total opposite because it wasn't sexy. Looked like a man, kind of to have convulsions but it, it got loads and loads of laughs and they and, they, and afterwards they just said it was really funny and also they've got a hint of going out a lot more <laughs> yeah. um, but it's not a story uh, but yeah. <laughs> so it, it was kind of it was kind of fun and, and I do have all the comedy that I do actually is related to real life mm. things that have happened I do rugby stuff I used to play rugby being a blood donor all that kind of stuff mm. they're really but they are probably more in the format of the older school of uh, variety TV kind mm. of comedy, mm. which um, but there's elements of truth to them. I like my I like my comedy in that kind of world. Yeah, it's it's kind of like a it, it is it is a, the weirdest. I'm going to say hobby because I'm not mm. a professional. It's the weirdest hobby I've ever had because it is all encompassing, and that is actually the hard thing. And you do have to kind of um, temper it. When I first got into it, it was, like, it was almost like, you know, wow, that's so fantastic, I'm going places and people listen to me and I, I can make people laugh, it's so fantastic, and I forgot about my family and, mm. and my wife, and, yeah. uh, and, uh, even though you're talking yeah, about yeah, her, yeah, yeah, family. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, talk, I talk more about her, yeah. um, when I was with other people than yeah. to her, mm-hmm. and then I come home in the evening after having gigged for three nights, and come home, and then, um, when I get home and he goes, oh, how's your day? Oh, I just fall asleep on the sofa. So, so I sorted that one out, kids. So if you are with a partner with somebody, mm. please make sure you sort that kind of rule balance. out. Balance is what it's all about. And um, sometimes when it's not balanced, it can cause... Um, mm, rifts. Uh... Rifts and ructions. But mm. um, touch wood as I tap my head. We have got that sorted right. sort of out. I basically do everything she says. <laughs> and, uh, and, and it seems to work really well. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's important. Keep, your, keep your partner happy. There's, there's a book there. Yeah, there's a book there, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Keep your partner happy, kids. And then the comedy will also flow. Yeah, that's... And the kids get the, the say get them got the message they they are still at home they moved out. And, and, and it's, it's I'm going to do the worst stuff yeah, about yeah, you yeah, if you yeah. don't move out. This is yeah. it. Now it's, uh, actually they've been very supportive and they do they don't come and see me all the time. And uh, when I'm at home, it is um, I mean dad jokes um, I love. Um, mm. They kind of grow. And my son is actually a lot funnier mm. uh, than I am. And they call these gags, uh, mm. but you know, they're, they're, they're they're great and they come and support and all that type of thing. It's really lovely. And they'll come and see me every now and again, um, not all the time. Mm. But they like, uh, you know, so they'll see me kind of, probably they'll, some of them popped down to Brighton last year and they hadn't seen me for a year. They said how much I'd changed, which was great because they are quite stern critics mm. and they, you know, it was really good. So I, I like I like impressing them, I have to say, right. as well. But I don't sit at the dinner table kind of cracking jokes all day long mm. and... Um, uh, the yeah. notebook. Well, yeah, yeah, nice. yeah. <laughs> Funny thing happened to me on the way to the light switch. Um, but, um, uh, I was in the garage, um, yeah, but all that kind of stuff. Don't don't do that. Kind of mm. tend to be normal. But if if I do have a, g- a gag which is youth based, mm-hmm. um, or I want to find the kind of uh, the words that mm. the, the kids on the street are using, mm. even though they're now and in the twenties, um, I can run it by them and then get all oh, that sad and no, that lame. Mm. Don't do that. Mm. Or people would say this. So if they're great as reference points uh, mm-hmm. for that kind of stuff, I. Do incorporate a little bit of my family stuff in there, but I do do kind of you know my I've done my Christmas gag. Shall I do my Christmas gag? If you want, yeah, yeah, yeah. why not? The Christmas gag was um, I love Christmas. It's my favourite time of the year. I get to dress up like a genie and go to my wife and say, "Darling, we're going to have some pantomime sex now." And she says, oh, no, you're not. Uh, so too late, it's behind you, mm. that kind of thing. It's sad, yeah. and I feel now absolutely embarrassed for having said that, but uh, I love that gag. Yeah. And, um, and I've only just thought of it. There we go. But it's, about, <laughs> but it's probably oh. right from the 70s. <laughs> um, that kind of stuff, I kind of, mm. it's, it's, it's silly. And um, I don't dress like a genie, and no, I don't. Just want to clarify that for the audience. Uh, it's um, uh, Captain Hook I dress like. I saw you on the Laughing Horse website, so I did research you. Oh, gosh. It's Johnny Murph, uh, and... I it was the mild mannered man of mirth. That's a lot of blooming alliteration. The mild mannered man of mirth. Yeah, I, I 
And that is in you're on the Laughing Horse website. Aren't yeah, you? yeah. I, I well, I did um, the Laughing Horse um, new, uh, act. new act thing um, and uh, and up the website, which was weird. Yeah. yeah, I looked at it one day and I thought, "That's bloody me." Mm. Quite nice. I couldn't uh, find you on the comedy CV. Where were you on the comedy? Oh, you know, what? I haven't done that yet. I'm ah, lazy. Right. I, I should I should do that. That's one thing I kind of did do. The, interesting, kind of about the, the the other side of it is the PR side, mm. doing kind of Twitter, Facebook comedy CV, your website, mm. and all that kind of stuff, and booking gigs and trying to get gigs. Mm. And, and there's a whole bunch of other stuff Admin. that is kind of, like, weird. Uh, I did do a website. Um, oh, it's, it's actually a bit of a pain. I can see why people get people to do websites. And I, and I know the merits of doing a website, um, all that kind of stuff. I, I think you need to do it because, exactly, you try to research me and you couldn't, couldn't find... Um, uh, my website is actually it's johnnymurf.com just for you people out there as is my Twitter handle <laughs> oh shameless plug uh, but um, it was um, yeah I should do a comedy CV because I, I, I have been told to do that and I thought I must do that I must do that hmm. New Year's resolution number three then um, I'll do that uh, uh, but the laughing horse thing was uh, yeah it was nice uh, to be on there and um, it doesn't really mean a great deal apart from I'm on there um, which is which is but if, if people are looking at it's funny again it goes back to um getting a, something behind your name or a uh, competition or some kind of recognition. People go, oh, well, he's on the Laughing Horse website. It must be good then, eh? So, yes, I am, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> and um, it's, yeah, but there's a lot of admin-y things yeah, you have to do right. and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And there might be a little bit of futility to it because, hey, come and see me at my gig. Um, I don't have a great amount of people that follow me over to gigs you know, and you stuff. You right. Life is futile. Fuck yeah. it. <laughs> what did it die? Exactly. Resistance <laughs> <laughs> is futile. I think that's my tracking reference there, so yeah. Uh, but, um, but it, yeah. you know, it, it's, it's, it's a kind of, the, you know, it's like a lot of things you have to do, certain things, because that's, yeah, that's part of people it, do part of it do so yeah it's funny it's funny, it's funny about reviews and things or, or, or competitions and stuff you know I've never, I've never like I said I'm never going to win any of those things the, the few times I've really felt truly happy and this is going to sound moderately perverse mm. is when I've gone to a gig and somebody's come up to me afterwards and said oh my dad just pissed himself laughing at you mm-hmm. and I went oh that's oh thank you so much because no no he's actually pissed himself I said, what? He said he was going to go to the toilet, and when you came on, he thought he liked you, and he didn't want to go, and he stayed, and then he ended up wetting himself at your joke, and he told me, I wow. thought, my God, because he would come over and say, say hello to you, but he's too embarrassed. Oh. Don't come over to the table. Oh, and, no. I, and I thought, that's, a, that's a, one of the nicest that's things someone said to me, and I had a young lady who also had the same situation with a friend of hers. Um, he said, oh, my friend thinks you're fantastic. He goes, oh, well, thank you. Uh, and, and she left, and he goes, no, she just wet herself. She, she's waiting for people to leave, so she can... And I thought, oh. for me, <laughs> defecation is the highest form of gratitude. <laughs> not a dry seat in the house. But it was, um, it, it was, it was weird. And I felt, I thought, wow, I've done that. And that's what actually, you know, and I felt the happiest. So not that I want to start a trend, but kind of, um, it was. It was the weirdest thing. I thought, yeah. I, I've made somebody wet themselves with laughter. Yeah. I, that has made me so happy. Yeah. And those have been the other high spots in comedy. Um, it kind of like you know, you think, wow, it, it's and. and those are the things that keep you going because mm. for all the kind of gigs where you, you don't hit or you kind of, you know, so-so mm. and you have the gigs where people come up to you after because, oh, that was great, that was mm. really funny and you kind of go, yeah, yeah and then mm. and you'll drive off to a next gig or, and then you'll finally go to a pub and there is nobody there yeah. and the, there is like three or four people there mm. and God rest them, thank them for coming out but you know what, they're not going to laugh because it's kind of embarrassing that it's only them mm. and you kind of, just do your thing. You just mm. you, you do do it by numbers a little bit. You try and engage a little bit, mm. and then they don't want to engage, yeah. and you back off. There's only so much of this yeah. awkwardness they can take. Because you're on, you're on, you're on, kind of like number two, or, or, or you're opening on number two. Because if you engage too much, they're going to get up and leave. Mm. Then the rest of comedians are doing nothing to nobody. Mm. I, 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 you've, I, I'm sure you've done gigs where you've turned up and there's absolutely no audience. I, I've turned, the other day I turned up on the wrong day. Uh, yeah, I saw that. I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh, you're early oh. for the gig. Yeah. I was like, I'm super early. But that, to be fair, that was that night, the night I turned up, there was 50 people there. Wow. The next night, two. Wow. Two people. And I was like, guys, I was here so early for the. That was half my shtick because yeah. I was like, look, there wasn't two people there. I was like, I was so early for this gig. I was here yesterday. You should have been here. There was 50 people here. Yeah. None of them here for comedy, but I was here. <laughs> that monkey shine gig is such a lovely gig when it's yeah. full. Yeah. But. They was they were just on their exams and it was just yeah. It was, it was it, it, that, that's a, I mean any, any you know, I've, I've you know been to gigs once I went to a gig um, in Kentish Town which was well I've two, two gigs in Kentish Town but one, one gig I won't mention the name of the gig it doesn't run anymore it doesn't matter anymore. but <laughs> um, <laughs> yes it was nobody was there yeah we went there nobody was there oh, um, and it was like you know um, we're all looking at each other going well what should we do 
and people going, oh, well, you know, I'm going to try and get jump in on some other gig that's kind of nearby yeah. or whatever. So what we did was we did a whole, we did the whole night, but everyone had a minute. So basically we, um, and we each gave, gave each other, there was like 10 comedians, and we each gave each other subjects. So I, 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 I was emceeing it, so I kind of I said, right, well, here we are, fantastic audience in tonight, all that kind of stuff. And said, and let's bring to the stage whoever yeah. it was. And they came up and said, and their subject matter is, and I pointed at one of the comedians and he went, shoes. <laughs> <laughs> this guy had to be funny on shoes for a minute. Yeah. And then we went through the whole night as if it was a real night. Yeah. Um, and at the end of it, said, you've been a fabulous audience. Thanks for coming. Yeah. It was over in about 10 minutes. Oh, great. Uh, but oh, we, all, we all had a laugh. Yeah. And, and um, because sometimes you've been to this gig, and oh, bloody hell, it's ridiculous. Uh, yeah. And because no, if you don't promote a gig or try to make a gig happen, you have no idea about, mm. you know, people go, oh, well, I've come here with my art, and I've kind of, you know, I can't believe those here, bloody hell. Mm. But these guys all kind of like got up and just kind of had a laugh for 10 minutes. We were upstairs on the pint, and someone went to a gig nearby and just sat down and watched other people do stuff. Mm. But it's some of those kind of zero gig ones where you've driven a long way. Yeah. And you get there and you kind of go, what am I doing? It's like life, isn't it? You just, why get annoyed about it? You know, yeah. just, it, it, it's, it is what it is. You can't, for, you can't control, like with comedy, sometimes you can't, you, it's control, isn't it? Really? Yeah. yeah. But sometimes you can't control things. You're like, well, this is, they're either going to like this or they're not. Yeah. And I can't, I can't, I've, I've honed it as much as I can do, but I can't force them to laugh at my stuff. Yeah. Me, you know, yeah. I, or like me, you know? Yeah. I, I have one of those faces. It's like maybe they don't. Maybe they're bullied by someone by me. Maybe someone dumped them. <laughs> maybe I am the person that. Maybe the, I, that's the reason. I did get badly heckled once. Uh, there was a chap. I used to do a thing where I used to come out and pretend I was nervous, uh, which I was. I'd say I'm a bit of a stress eater. Uh, I eat when I'm stressed. I kind of. Uh, I also eat when other people are stressed. And uh, you look stressed, sir. And he said, "I am because I'm married to her." I got a big laugh, and I said, "Well, here's a, and I used to keep a biscuit in my pocket." And I, uh, I was going, "Here's a biscuit. Now have that for later." Yeah. And he goes, "I'll need the old packet, mate. Drive married to her." And of course, big laugh from the room. And I no. thought, "Well, I shall, I shall plunder that comic the gold." And I said, "Oh, really?" And then this woman, uh, <laughs> Tara, says, she had a very kind of heavy uh, Scottish accent. I apologise to any Scottish people listening to her. And she says, "You think you're a funny man? You think you're a funny man?" Well, funny off, yeah. And then she, every kind of expletive come out of her mouth. And then she can't, she can't give me the finger. And Jim Carrey did this thing in, a, in a, one of the um, uh, films he did where he plays the vet, and I can't really remember the name of it now, um, but um, where he kind of pretends to play a trumpet and his middle index fingers in the air, so he's giving something the finger. And she was doing that for about 30 seconds. I couldn't stop her. She goes, and at the final note, she would kind of strike the finger pose. And of course, it was like, I have no idea what to do. I have my, my set. And I try to engage a yeah. bit, and I am now up Ship Street without a paddle. Wow. And that was early on, actually. <laughs> now I would probably engage a little bit more. Mm. Um, but she was like, you know, you're not funny. You're not a funny man. Yeah. You're not a funny man. You think you're funny. I just kind of looked to the, the bar staff and said, can we have more biscuits over here, please? <laughs> Got a laugh. <laughs> Great. But it threw me badly. Yeah. And uh, But then people thought I, I was good at taking hackles. Mm. And another man who looked like Freddie Mercury kind of st- stepped in uh, and started saying, and it was like, Wow, I realise now how unexperienced I am, right. um, inexperienced, whatever. I'm not good at the English, and that was that was a really early on in my career. And but and I did my stuff, and I got booked this kind of first time. I got paid actually. It was a gig in Stevenage. The the person who promoted the evening came up and said, "No, oh, don't worry, Johnny. You know, you did really well because they're a tough crowd or a mm. tough crowd." And I opened up, and I got a few laughs. I got laughs and all that kind of stuff. But I really honed in on the people that weren't laughing mm. and. The, the the lady who was um, uh, heckling me and all that kind of stuff. My husband came up and goes, oh, bloody, you're hysterical, mate. That was the yeah. la- best laugh I've had in years. And all that kind of stuff. Uh, but uh, to me, I just felt absolutely distraught and I thought I wasted people. I, I, I felt guilty taking the money for the night oh, uh, and, yeah. and all that. Although I took it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I drank yeah. the free beers that came with it because I was getting a lift. Uh, but yeah. um, it was... Um, yeah, it was kind of a weird. That was that was probably the most I've ever been heckled. Crikey, I just, that just flashed into my head there. Yeah. Uh, it, it was the most I've ever been heckled and it was... Um, a difficult experience because I wasn't that experienced myself. I'd finally got a ten together. That was my first real time of actually doing it professionally, so mm. to speak. Um, the rest of comedians all stormed it, of course, <laughs> which made me feel even better. Uh, <laughs> you I thought, set it up for them, though. Yeah, you took I the totally hit. set up the room. Yeah. Thank you, Wendy. Yeah. You've got a lovely face. And if I ever, <laughs> ever see that man... I will I'm, lift the rock off I will now. Really, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and breathe. <laughs> so, so that was... That was, uh, that was uh, that was kind of more inspiring as on the train home in Germany. Oh, great gig, great gig. Uh, what do you have a good... Uh, Johnny. Anyway, so it was a really good gig. <laughs> yes, uh, have a biscuit. And uh, oh, thanks very much. Oh, yeah. And that's why I'm now 97 stone. I don't know why I went to the old stories, like old war horse stories, but that, that was kind of, that was a funny, that yeah. was a funny experience. But, you know, you know, driving to different rooms and different mm. people and some people, uh, my, my favourite gig was a gig in Hull. Mm. There was a lovely man called Steve Rimmer 
Oh who, yes, who does? Yes. Um, who is um, ex- bomb disposal expert? Yes. A big dr- um, fan of flying drones, Ooh. and um, he has wonderful gigs up in Hull. If if you have never been there, and I thought my humour would not travel at all, mm. and I went to do one of his nights quite a while ago. Now it was my first twenty. Mm. And people laughed so much that I forgot my four minutes of my act because mm. t- because I was conscious of doing twenty minutes and being too time, and I got so many laughs, and I thought. And I was absolutely beside myself for happiness when mm. I had a re- stayed the, the night over at, at, in the Hull. The, the most wonderful experience. Yeah. And I thought, this is absolutely fabulous. And it was a nice, nice full room, really n- lots of other great acts mm. on there. And it was a really lovely evening of comedy. But I never thought it would translate. Mm. And then I realised that my kind of comedy is kind of mm. old school northern comedian type mm. comedy um, in in the kind of the nicest kind of variety sense of the word. And that, that was really, that was a shocker. That was mm. my first kind of driving a long way away to do a gig and, and getting money. But the money never covered the gig. Mm. But it just was the experience of it. And it was lovely to be asked as well. It was um, uh, wonderful. It was a really wonderful um, experience. And uh, that, that was great. Did a lot of co- um, activity with some really big lads into my rugby thing. Yeah. Some behemoth in the audience I got out yeah. and, and, and pretending we were twins and uh, mm. all, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. It was just really silly. It was good to go to different parts of the world. Mm. I wanted gig in Ireland I've never gigged in mm. Ireland because mm. I've got Irish roots and things yeah. and um, I'd love to go gig in Ireland yeah. I, I did my first headline spot uh, when I was pre- when I two, about, about two years in just ages ago I was so and I, and I nailed it I was just full of beans yeah, and, yeah. The and the whatever the material was probably terrible but I just really sold it and I was yeah. like oh this was great and I, I, I there was a guy on before me called Alan Hurley and he said look man would you mind filming my, my set I said yeah no problem at all I'll film it uh, and then as soon as I Got, left it recording and as soon as I got on stage I had invited a couple of friends around I went great and it was the first headline spot I ever had and I was like as soon as I got on stage the tape ended and I was like god <laughs> and I was so annoyed yeah. like, I got his completely and my I missed out on yeah. but it was my first headline spot and it went so well and I was like oh man you know because it was just so <laughs> it was like it was that first headline spot you know it's like doing your first gig yeah. it's just like oh this really this, I, I can, I, I've got this I can yeah. do this you know, and I was like, oh, but it just went so well. And I was like, nuts. Yeah. I didn't film my first gig ever, ever either. Uh, oh. I, I've, I've got to film on my first gig. Oh, wow. And, um, yeah, that, that was, um, I watched back it and, and actually, I, I actually made, you know, watched it and actually laughed at it. Mm-hmm. And I thought, that was actually funny, that bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, the 10 seconds, that one it was. Uh, but um, out of a 45 minute set, no, it was, um, it, it, it was actually, again, it was just, uh, you could see it was of somebody who was actually brand spanking new. But it was, I, I was enjoying myself. And I liked the fact I, was enjoying myself, uh, and and also sometimes you, you've got to remember. Well, I I, th- I think a lot of people stress too much about the comedy and don't enjoy it, mm. and they kind of go to a gig and they get really angry. Mm. And um, uh, uh, there was one classic thing that happened. I'm not going to again mention the comedians, but uh, it was quite a while ago now. But I went to a, a gig. There was this comedian uh, who was who was kind of fairly on the cusp of kind of you know he was kind of known mm. doing uh, and yeah. um, and there was another comedian on stage doing his set. To Whoa. Him. And uh, it was, um, and we watched the set, and the set was going down really well. And uh, this comedian, I was sitting beside him, was fuming and began to fume and getting more, more turned to Hulk, and his body was shaking. And um, anyway, this guy finished the set, and, the, and it was a break just before the interval. Got quite a few laughs. He said, "Right, I'm gonna fucking," kill. and kind of was swearing and, and all that kind of stuff. And I thought, "My, my God, what, what's the matter?" Because we just gigged two weeks ago somewhere, and he said, "And that is my set." That guy just did all my jokes. He said, <laughs> I was trying to be kind of stop fight. So it could be a tribute act, uh, which never mm. went down well. And I had to stop him from fighting. And I went wow. to the other comedian and said, Do you know? He goes, and the other comedian, God bless him, didn't, wasn't aware that he'd done that. It was like, you know, and I thought, you've got to be aware of that at least. Mm. I mean, everyone kind of, you know, down yeah. the line has kind of used a gag and whatever, but you try not to obviously steal jokes mm. and. Um, Outright. And, 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 yeah, absolutely. You might have the same ideas, lots of parallel ideas mm. going on. That was the most amazing thing I've wow. ever seen. And this guy had to physically be held back and the other gig person had to be told to leave. I never saw that other person again, actually. It was kind of interesting. It was the last time I ever saw him gig. So maybe that was a... Mm. Maybe got one of those kind of letters in the post saying, yeah. if I see another gig, you will die. Yeah, well, um, but it was yeah. like, you know, it was, it was amazing. Um, but mostly most people don't... Um, again, there's always a thing about stealing jokes. I've, I've never heard anyone really steal jokes. Yeah. The circuit does police itself, yeah. does it, pretty yeah. well. Where is your next gig and where can we come see you? Well, it's not gonna be it's not gonna be for a while, fine mm. young people. It's going to be at Let's Laugh in, in Brixton 
in uh, the end of February because mm. um, I said I'd go back in March but um, Ariel Sumo who's a lovely comedian mm. um, asked me to come and do her gig um, in Brixton so I'm going to do that mm. and then I'm emceeing the week after at TNT in Kentish Town uh, Simon Wall's a, a fabulous gig will be running seven years wow. um, on the 7th of March um, which mm. is in Kentish Town uh, but if you um, come and uh, go to my um, website which will be um, let me remember it. It's johnnymurth.com. Mm. Crikey, you forgot my own name. In, in about a three days' time, by well, the time this podcast goes out, I will have updated it with those gig dates cool. on there. And I'd love to see you. And if you've heard the podcast, come up and say hello, uh, and I'll let you buy me a drink. Yeah. That's the kind of guy I am. Follow Johnny Murph on Twitter. Twitter. Uh, it's, uh, it, it's Johnny Murph. And I've got my pun challenge, um, uh, which is um, hashtag MurphPun365. Mm. Murph being M-U-R-P-H-Y. Um, please, um, uh, thumbs up, share like, dislike, do love whatever me. you want to do. Love me. All those things. Just love me. <laughs> I need to be loved. Oh, winter. Oh, winter. I don't want to go. Hey, don't let me out. Please, no, 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 don't push me out of the door. No, 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 no. I'm not desperate. I'm not desperate at the end. Gonna... I love you. <laughs> Johnny, Johnny, it's Johnny Murph, the mild-mannered man of mirth. Thank yeah. you for coming on the show. God bless you. Winter. Thanks very much. Really enjoyed it. Thank you. Thanks, man. Cheers. And that was episode 30 with It's Johnny Murph. Go find him on Twitter. His Twitter handle is at It's Johnny Murph. Go find him on Facebook. Go check his stuff out on YouTube. But no, don't bother doing that. Just don't go bother checking his stuff out on YouTube. Go see him live. He's taking his show down to the Brighton Fringe again. And hopefully him and his show with his other two friends are going to win another accolade from the Brighton Fringe. Good luck to him. Johnny's a lovely guy. Very funny man. Go check his stuff out. Find him on Twitter. At It's Johnny Murph, the mild-mannered man of mirth. Now, if you like this podcast and you want to follow us, we're on Twitter. We're there. And that is at The Comedy Defect. If you want to follow me, it's at Winter Phonander. If you want to come see my live stand-up gig dates, and I'm doing a preview of my Edinburgh show called It's Not Just for Christmas, go check that out as well. There'll be a show in Dover, and there are other dates. All the addresses are on my website in the events page. Go check that out. I'm also doing the Guinness Jokes or the Encyclopedic Jokes Challenge, which I'm calling it at the moment, because at the moment it's a challenge to start up again. But I'm doing it. I'm going to get it done. And those Twitter jokes will be released on Twitter, which is at Guinness Jokes is where they will be. And it's Encyclopedic Jokes and at Guinness Jokes. I'm going to do it, guys. I'm going to get through this Guinness Encyclopedia. I'm going to write as many jokes as I can. Some of them will be pretty ropey. But hey, it's the doing it that counts. It really is. If you like this podcast and you want to donate to us, uh, just we're on Patreon. Just go to Patreon. Uh, you'll see my video that I put up. You can like it or hate it. Hey, leave a comment. Why not? And you can donate as much or as little as you want. But if you can't kick something back, just go to iTunes or Podbean or wherever you get your podcasts and leave us a nice, honest review. We've got some great guests coming up on the show. I've recorded a couple in the last couple of days that I'm really happy with. Uh, It was great. I had a couple of friends that I haven't spoken to in a while. It's just great to get them in a room and chat to them about what they're getting up to in comedy. Uh, Some people have got some serious work ethic, and I love it. It's great. It's inspiring for me to have them on the show, and I just love talking to them just to pick their brain about what they're doing right now. And you'll love listening to the interview that I had with them. I've had some, everyone I've had on the show I've equally loved. But there are some just little nuggets of information which are really going to help everyone else as well. On the next show we have episode 31. And that is with a guy who's been touring Australia. He's gigged in Hawaii. He's done most of the comedy clubs in New York. Oh, he's, he's been blessed with the, the tours he's been doing. But he's a funny guy. He's worked hard for it. It is the very funny Gary Sampson. That is episode 31. And that is it for now from the Comedy Defect podcast. We'll see you next week for episode 31 with Gary Sampson.